If you want to feel like Max Verstappen as you accelerate race and chicane your way through the city with captivating control, then the Apollo Phantom V3 will make you feel like you're driving an F1 car on two wheels. Featuring Apollo's new Mac 1 controller, an integrated mobile app, terrifyingly fast Ludo mode, and one of the most ergonomic cockpits that I've ever had the pleasure of testing, it builds on the knockout blueprint enshrined by previous iterations to deliver spine-tingling performance and exquisite handling. While there are scooters that give the Phantom a run for its money, not many of them offer the same level of all-encompassing customer experience. It's for this reason that I believe that the V3 will continue a lineage of highly popular Apollo scooters. If you want to know more, keep watching as I take a look at its design and features, share the results from my performance tests, and compare how it stacks up to similarly priced scooters. It's clear that the Apollo City has been a bountiful source of inspiration in the development of the V3 Phantom, and nowhere is this more evident than along the handlebars. The regen and acceleration paddles are of the same large 7th generation design, while the integrated controls for your turn signals, riding modes, and on-off activation have been spread across the bar, all within easy reach of your thumbs. At the heart of it is the new LX display, which has replaced the older Hex variant. Not only is it bigger with double the refresh rate and anti-glare technology, but it now grants you access to all of your key stats, including your speed, distance traveled, and remaining mileage, as well as the ability to activate the fearsome Ludo mode, but more on that shortly. And finally, a nod to the ultra-wide 27-inch handlebars themselves. I'm a big fan of their concaved shape. They inspire confidence by making you feel safely enclosed, while the flared grips at either end maximize control and handling. As for the rest of the frame, the Phantom is known for its proprietary design that shook the market upon its original release. As opposed to using a white label product, each component was built to fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. It's the sum of parts that function like the intricate mechanics of a Swiss watch. You'll be glad then to learn that the V3 doesn't deviate from its origins, but instead builds on its blueprint with a plethora of upgrades. As for its deck, it measures 20.5 by 8.5 inches, and the kick plate gives you an extra 5.5 inches on top of that. Small details like the shallow angle and the flat shape of the kick plate make a big difference to how you ride. Combined with the deeply treaded and extremely grippy rubber matting, which now features cutouts to make access to the controllers and battery easier, the Phantom V3 sets the industry standard for how all decks should be designed. There's also a white logo on the deck, while an unknown yet cool easter egg is the geometric tread pattern that spells out the letter A for Apollo. Another benefit of the large deck is its ability to support riders up to 300 pounds. When testing the Phantom, I weighed 190 pounds, so I can confidently say that it will deliver an excellent level of performance for riders around this weight. However, Given its powerful motors, battery, and durable build, I can see it performing admirably for riders up to 270 pounds. Now, it's no secret that I regard the Phantom as one of the most comfortable electric scooters, and you can't earn that accolade without a decent pair of tires. Measuring 10 inches tall and 3.25 inches wide, they promise both stability and shock absorption in spades. What makes them stand out from the crowd, though, is their tread. Instead of being slick like the tire, on so many other performance scooters, they feature a texture that's moderately patterned. This lends itself to enhanced performance where they provide much needed traction while accelerating, braking, and turning corners. The tires also perform well during my terrain test where they maintain grip while being ridden over compacted dirt tracks and forest trails. If there was one improvement, it would be that they could be tubeless and self-healing like those on the Apollo City and the newly announced Apollo Explore 2024. Now, next up, let's take a look at the Phantom's portability features. I won't sugarcoat it, at £77, 
it is heavy. That said, it does come equipped with an intuitive folding mechanism. A claw-like mechanism pulls the stem flush to the base of the folding joint, while a strong plastic collar wraps around the folding lever to ensure it can't come loose while riding. Cementing the stem's lock position is a safety pin that punches through the stem. To collapse the stem, you simply pull the safety pin out, twist the collar and pull down on the folding lever. There's also a hook on the back of the handlebars that allows you to secure them to the deck when folded. In terms of extra features, there's the lights and the mobile app. When I reviewed the original Phantom, I was impressed with its lighting rig. It had a bright 1000 lumen headlight, LEDs embedded into the front and rear of the deck and a tail light. It, however, was missing one thing, turn signals that flashed at both the front and the rear. Well, Apollo has heard our feedback and has added a full suite of turn signals to the new Phantom, meaning it now has one of the best lighting packages that you can get. Building on this successful blueprint, the display now shows when the turn signals are active via flashing arrows. They also beep while in use. Then there's the mobile app. As seen on both the Apollo Air and City, it opens up a world of customization that will benefit riders of all experience levels. From the app, you can adjust your top speed as well as the speed of each riding mode, toggle between kick to start and zero start modes, turn cruise control on or off, and set the time it takes before it automatically kicks in, dial in the strength of the regen brake and acceleration, turn the digital lock on or off, which immobilizes the scooter by applying the electronic brakes, turn the lights on or off, use it as a navigational device where you can follow a route to your destination, record trips, and get range estimates based on your mode most recent riding pattern. So here comes the big question. From the design of the frame to the inclusion of the extra features, what's the V3's build quality like? Well, there's no denying that the original Phantom had some teething issues when it was first released, but the one you see today is three different scooters combined into one. To refine the scooter, Apollo gathered feedback from the 10,000 plus units of the V1 and V2 that they sold to tweak, improve and refine fresh the V3. The result is a scooter that addresses real world rider needs and concerns. It's been carefully designed with meticulous attention to detail. The proof is in the pudding though, even small details have undergone improvements. The steel kickstand not only acts as a sturdy foot for the scooter to rest on, but it protects the charge ports in the event of a crash. The newly equipped screw on charge port covers are more secure. The electrical components that make up the cockpit have plug and play cable connectors making replacement easy. The smart power management system protects against short circuiting, overcurrent, overcharging, under voltage and regulates the temperature of the scooter's core components and the IP54 water resistance rating ensures that it's protected against water and rain. My only reservation is with the poorly fitted rubber that sits around the plastic casing of the regen and throttle paddles. Overall though Apollo has done a great job and this is evident in how its design translates into a perfectly balanced performance profile, which we'll cover next. We're used to seeing brands piggybacking off other companies to fulfill key components, for their scooters, but in a first for an electric scooter company, Apollo has designed their own controller. Named the Mac one or M1 for short, it delivers a supremely smooth throttle response that's akin to a sine wave controller. However, it's not just a smooth acceleration curve. This combination of circuits, sensors and firmware has completely rewritten the rule book on what the 52 volt 1200 watt motors can conjure up in terms of torque, acceleration and top speed. Previously, the 52 volt Phantom V2 could reach 38 miles per hour while speeds of 43 miles per hour were achievable with the more expensive 60 volt 1400 watt variant. Now the V3 can reach a top speed of 41 miles per hour when in Ludo mode hitting the sweet spot between the two. How this stacks up against similarly priced scooters can be seen by applying a $500 bracket around the Phantom's price tag. This reveals 
five comparable models and the headline is that despite ranking fifth there's not much between the scooters just two miles per hour separates the v3 from the leaders of the pack the way i see it is this if you're looking for an all-terrain conqueror then the mantis king gt may be your best bet if luxuriously smooth ride quality and blisteringly fast acceleration rates are your deal breakers opt for the nami klima or if exquisite handling and control of mist urban jungles is your thing then look no further than the phantom on the topic of speed the phantom accelerates from 0 to 15 miles per hour in 2.3 seconds and to 25 miles per hour in just 4.5 seconds this is fast but thanks to the well-balanced frame and chassis you feel in control at all times Against the backdrop of the scooters that I recommend as alternatives, there are milliseconds between it and the two Mantis models. Where there's a big difference however, and one that you can tangibly feel, is with the Nami Klima's wind whipping performance. With dual 60 volt 1000 watt motors and 40 amp sine wave controllers, it achieves the fastest acceleration rate that I've ever recorded, making it 35% quicker to 25 miles per hour than the Phantom. Nevertheless, the Phantom's combination of a zero dead zone throttle and fierce acceleration remain impressive. It's 3,200 watts of peak power make it an enthusiastic hill climber too. According to manufacturer specs it will overcome steep inclines of up to 25 degrees though in reality you'll start to feel it slow on anything that's beyond 15 degrees. Then there's the 52 volt 23.4 amp hour battery that puts out a maximum range of 40 miles. Under my test where the riding conditions included me as a 190 pound rider, a circuit of undulating city streets and periods of fast acceleration, cruising and at multiple stops, the real world range came in at 29 miles. Comparing the Phantom's range credentials against similarly priced competitors, it trails the likes of the Mantis King GT and the Nami Klima. You see, the reality is the King GT's battery is 18% bigger than the V3's, while the Klima's is 23% bigger. Despite this, the Phantom has enough in its tank to suffice for most journeys. I'd also factor in the rest of the V3's overall package before being swayed too much by these stats. And one of those things to consider is the quadruple suspension system. The shocks are exceptionally well calibrated to guarantee comfort regardless of your weight, while the absence of any bottoming out is a testament to the excellent damping that they provide. Working in cahoots with the large air-filled tyres, the suspension distinguishes this scooter as one of the best models for ride quality in its price class. It does its best work on roads, but it can also get by on dirt tracks and trails if required. On a scale of 1 to 10, where 1 is extremely stiff and 10 is exceptionally soft, I scored it a 7. Another area of its performance worth taking note of is its stopping power. Apollo thrives on ripping up the rule book and the brand's been at it again with the incorporation of the first ever regen brake paddle on a performance scooter. It not only recharges the battery by up to 10% but it keeps the accompanying mechanical brakes fresh and free from wear. To get nerdy here's how the regen brakes work. When applied the flow of electricity from the battery to the motors is cut however because the wheels are still rotating and moving forward kinetic energy is created this creates electricity which is then drawn away from the motors and funneled back to the battery so that it can recharge by drawing the kinetic energy away drag is created thereby slowing the rotation of the wheels combined with the 160 millimeter hydraulic discs the complete setup will bring you to a stop from 15 miles per hour in an outstanding 2.1 meters this along with the phantom's well-balanced performance profile and sublime handling are its main calling cards it's what sets it apart as the patrick mahones in a field of comparable scooters from the ultra wide handlebar ergonomic controls and spacious deck to the well damp suspension traction loving tires and powerful mac one controller the ride quality on display is nothing short of sensational as soon as you step foot on it and hit the throttle you feel at one with the scooter 
Apollo is a brand that doesn't like to leave anyone behind. For beginners, they have the Apollo Air. For commuters, they offer the City. And for those seeking power and performance, the Ghost, Phantom, and Pro all deliver. The Phantom hits the sweet spot between an entry-level dual motor model and one that's been designed for ultra performance. But if you were just to simply look at its performance in the speed and mileage departments against similarly priced competitors, some would argue that it's easy to overlook. It's not a chart topper by any means, but look, one thing that I've learned after reviewing over 100 electric scooters is that raw power isn't everything. Just as the great Muhammad Ali said, float like a butterfly, a sting like a bee. You see, agility is just as important as power. There are just a handful of models that combine graceful handling with immense power, and the Apollo Phantom V3 is one of them. Pros include the new Mac One controller unleashes Ludo mode for increased torque, top speed, and a rapid acceleration rate, while also enabling a supremely smooth throttle response. It's the first ever performance electric scooter to feature a regenerative brake paddle. It has supreme handling. The quadruple springs are perfectly calibrated. The mobile app lets you customize performance settings. It's great for tall and heavy riders. The cockpit has been ergonomically designed. The lighting rig is excellent, it has sharp and responsive hydraulic brakes, and an IP54 water resistance rating protects it against inclement weather. Cons include the display could be brighter, the rubber that sits around the plastic casing of the regen and throttle paddles is poorly fitted, and there's no denying that there are similarly priced scooters that offer more raw power, but some don't match up to Apollo's end-to-end -end customer experience. Now there are, of course, some circumstances where the V3's value is challenged, and and it's here where I'm going to share some alternatives. But before I do that, it's worth pointing out that if you already own the V2 Phantom, you can purchase a V3 upgrade kit for just $399. After you've installed it, you'll benefit from all of the design and performance upgrades that the V3 model offers. Right, let's get to the alternatives. If your priority is all-terrain versatility, then the Mantis King GT is a better choice. Not only does it have terrain agnostic tyres and an adjustable hydro hydraulic suspension system that promises even greater shock absorption, but it also has 16 more miles in its locker, as well as an acceleration rate that's 14% faster. But look, it does cost more. It supports 35 pounds less rider weight, and it doesn't have an independent regen brake. Next up, if buttery smooth ride quality and extremely fast acceleration rates are important to you, then the Nami Klima may be your best bet. It's 35% faster off the line, puts out 10 more miles, and has superior all-terrain riding credentials thanks to its industry-leading adjustable hydraulic shocks that score 9 out of 10 on our shock absorption scale. However, it costs more, supports £35 less rider weight, it doesn't have an independent regen brake or a mobile app, though you can create customized riding modes via the display. And finally, if you're on a budget and are happy to accept a scooter with controls that aren't as ergonomic, as well as a clunky folding mechanism, and a seven mile shorter range than the much cheaper Mantis V2, 18.2 amp variant will be ideal. It also supports 35 pounds less rider weight, doesn't have a mobile app, and there's no independent regen brake either. Now, to find out more about the Apollo Phantom or any of the alternatives, check out the links in the description. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.